I already spent very watching Henry real, real, real to real, as real can be real, watching Henry real. Hello and welcome to Henry Wheeler's Movie Reviews, where I take a look at films I've never seen before, but others likely will have done. And now, we're going to be continuing our international journey through cinema with my segment, National Pride. And today is Jamaican Independence Day, celebrating the country's independence from the UK in 1962. Jamaica is an island in the Caribbean, being the third largest in the area, with the two largest, Cuba and Hispaniola, to the north and the east, respectively. The capital is the largest city, Kingston, and it was originally inhabited by the Taino people, who are now sadly extinct. The country was originally under Spanish rule until 1655, when it was invaded by the Brits, who renamed it Jamaica. It is the third most populous English-speaking country in the Americas, with nearly 3 million people, and is mainly made up of people who have descended from the Atlantic slave trade in West Africa, with some minorities from a Chinese, Indian, Lebanese and European background also. Due to the mass emigration in the 1960s to the UK in particular, but also Canada and the US among others, the global influence of Jamaican culture has been enormous, giving the world reggae, dub, ska, dancehall music, along with the Rastafari religion, and of course, gotta love that jerk chicken. So, I really only had one choice for this video. Uh, there is, in fact, another important Jamaican film, The Harder They Come, but I've already seen it, so it defeats the purpose of this channel a little. As a result, we've only one option left. I went with the 1978 film, Rockers. This was originally made to be a documentary with real reggae musicians just doing their thing, but it was turned into a narrative and has now become one of the most beloved music films ever. Though I do find it slightly sad that there is only two significant Jamaican films. In any case, I, I want to see what they do with these musicians since generally musicians aren't the best actors, so let's get started. So we follow legendary drummer Leroy Horsemouth Wallace, who down on his luck with not much in the way of cash uh, to provide for his wife and children, decides to buy a motorbike so he can go around and make some extra money selling and distributing records. However, when at a party, his bike is stolen and he aims to get it back. So to start off, the music here is excellent. It's showing off some of the real greats of the reggae scene, just doing their thing and I'm all for that. I could have used the Lee Perry cameo though. It would have been cool seeing him producing something in the Black Ark, but oh well. At least my favourite song he produced uh, is on the soundtrack, Police and Thieves, uh, which is also my favourite reggae song, incidentally. And it works excellently in the context of the film, in the scene where the cops show up to break up the party and Leroy's bike gets nicked, unfortunately. I'm really glad that the dramatic aspects work as well as they do. The acting all around is really competent, which could have not worked at all but they really pulled it off. Also, I like the Robin Hood aspect of the film that develops towards the end. Also, uh, Leroy's bike is really awesome. He paints this Rastafarian lion on the side, uh, which looks really, really great. But something I didn't expect was just how funny it is, particularly the scene where they infiltrate a bar playing disco music uh, or is it soul? I can't remember. I think they were playing disco and soul music and then locked themselves in the DJ booth playing reggae music, uh, much to the owner's horror. There's a real distinctive charm that this film has that I really enjoyed as far as 
I'm aware there's no actors that actually in the film, at least like professionally, I don't know if they went on to do something afterwards, but everyone is more or less playing themselves or at least a version of themselves. You really can't tell that these are just complete amateurs. I really like the authenticity of it, which is even more impressive given the fact that the writer and director is from Greece. <laughs> Having said that, Babylon, a really great film about the Jamaican youth in London was written and directed by an Italian, so, you know. And that's one of the best British films ever made, so perhaps it doesn't really matter if an outsider makes a film about a different culture, just as long as they respect it and are knowledgeable of the subject at hand, or, you know, just the culture in general. That was a part of the film about which I had some trepidation towards, whether they would mess this up and just make everyone caricatures. But after my first viewing, I have to breathe a sigh of relief because Theodoros, you got it spot on. <laughs> and as a lover of reggae music, I, 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 I approve. How <laughs> can you give this a I really did get a kick out of this film and it's one that I want to re-watch again at some point since it brought a big smile to my face and I really do hope that Jamaica makes films such as this again in future because it's a shame that a country which is so significant to popular culture more than any other given the size of the country they deserve better genuinely though i heard perry hensel has another film other than the harder they come which was lost until a few years ago so yeah i need to check that out as well so let me know what you thought of the film in the comments and of my critique as well happy jamaican independence day whoop whoop just a slight pet peeve of mine that i want to get off my chest Reggae music is not just the Marley family. I remember back in college, we had to do a PowerPoint presentation about a genre and compare two different artists. And someone chose reggae, and the two artists they chose were Bob Marley and Ziggy Marley. They may as well have mixed it up a bit, and Damien Marley, you know, at least. For God's sake. <laughs>